Want to discover a blueprint to safeguard your small business from looming disaster? In this video, we reveal five critical pitfalls that can sink your enterprise and provide actionable strategies to steer clear of them. From financial misstep to operational blunders, we dissect each catastrophe with expert insight and practical advice. Don't gamble with your business future. Tune in now to fortify your entrepreneurial journey and pave the way for lasting success. Fascinating. Peace, peace, peace. This is your international sales and marketing hit, man. Your humble hip hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rocking with the best you heard. Today, we are joined by uh, the 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 Holy Trinity. I'm going to call it the Holy Trinity. <laughs> we got my man, Tech, uh, financial uh, insurance advisor, notary entrepreneur, automation expert. What's up? Say what's up to him, Tech. Hey, happy Black History Month. Shout out to the brothers out there. Any brothers in the building tonight? Any brothers in the building? Of, of course, man. Of course. Hey, uh, everybody that's tuning in, drop a comment in the comment section so we know you guys are okay. This is a wellness check. Black wellness check. <laughs> and then we're also joined by my main man, London Dagens, business as usual, business funding, business credit specialist expert. Uh, it, it's rare that I could get this guy uh, live, but when I am able to do it, I'm going to grab the dude. I'm going to kidnap him. So <laughs> say what's up to him, London. Crowd, what's going on, everybody? Hey, tune in. Make sure you have your pen. Make sure you have your pad out because we're about to be dropping a lot of jewels. So my audience, I just went live, I believe, on my audience. So everybody tune in. I'm just glad to be here. Let's get it. Cool. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So shout out to my girl, Kim Yanni, out there in Washington. She says, what's up? Let's go. You know, um, shout out to Kedge X. Kedge, where you at? Kedge, uh, type in uh, what city you in. I love to give shout outs to uh, different cities. So sure. today, yeah. today is going to be an interesting topic, you guys. Uh, we're going to be talking about... Uh, Avoid these five small business catastrophes because we, at the end of the day, we're all entrepreneurs. The, despite what industry that you're in, whether it's notary industry, whether it's, you know, finances, insurance or whatever, we're all entrepreneurs. So um, the fact that we're addressing entrepreneurs on this, it is very important that we talk about the five main things that will make your business go kaplooey straight up. And we're also going to add uh, two bonuses on that. So uh, London, talk a little bit about um, what do you do and why people should listen to you and follow you too, brother. Yeah. Okay. Well, so if you are an entrepreneur, if you are a brand new LLC, and you haven't figured out yet, right? You haven't figured out what I mean, figured out. I mean, you're probably not making any money inside your business. So, which means the reason why, primarily the reason why you're not making any money in your business is because you lack capital, right? We need capital to buy equipment. We need capital uh, for marketing. We need capital for supplies. We need capital for staff. We need capital to invest in systems and, and get process, you know, in order to, not only start, but to grow and to scale our business. So if you are in need of capital, I'm definitely the person that could teach you not only how to strategize to get business credit, to get business funding, to get bank credit, right? Those are three different separate concepts. So I specialize in helping brand new LLCs start, grow, and scale their business by utilizing the bank's money, right? Whether it's community banks, whether it's national banks, whether it's credit unions, uh, any type of fintech companies, right? It's all different types of forms of financing out there for you. So I don't care where you are in your business, right? I don't care where you are. You may be broke. You may be uh, like capital. You may not have good personal credit. You might not have figured out how to establish your business credit. 
So that's what I specialize in. You might not even make any revenue in your business, no income. Did you know you can still get up to $100,000 in business funding by generating zero income in your business? So I'm going to break that all down. So you definitely want to stay in tune. Wonderful, brother. Uh, Tech, talk about that a little bit, uh, what we just talked about. Yeah. Oh, um, man. First of all, shout out to everybody that's always rocking with us, man. I just want to give some love out to the people who, and I just saw uh, there's a guy out in Oakland, KJX, KJX. You got to yep. let us know how you pronounce that. But yeah, man, shout out to the east side, west side, north side. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we'll talk later. I wonder about <laughs> <laughs> I gotta show love to the West Coast, man. Uh, but of course, you know, yeah, of course, of course. And, and London is one hundred percent, you know, full, you know, disclosure. I work with London personally because I know that there was a difference between the personal side and the business side, and it make, and it makes a difference to me. It really, if you're gonna say that you're in business. And you still use your personal cell phone. Those two mm -hmm. don't mix. You know what I'm saying? So you know, like we take off the handcuffs today, man. Let's. Yeah. let's hey. You go with these handcuffs. <laughs> hey, I watched the couple. Of li I, I watched a couple of your lives, and I see Tech bring out these handcuffs. I be like, <laughs> it's hilarious. It's hysterical. But it's necessary, though. It's necessary. It's, it's, it's the method behind the madness. If you are in business and you answer your business calls with your personal cell phone and not your business phone, then that's not a business. Same thing applies with the whole, when London broke that information down in a way that a fifth grader can understand it, as well as a 50 year old can understand it. I'm not 50, I might be bald, but what I'm saying is a business bank account versus a personal bank account, how these two things, not only on paper shows how established you are, but it makes a separation, a clear mm -hmm. distinction between what you do in your personal life, in your business life, and, the, and you should know that. Like you should do that. You should separate these two, not only just for the protection, but for like London says, the advantages that it brings. And you know, if you want to be in business and that's what you want to do, you want to leave a legacy for your family, for your kids, you want something that you own, these things, are necessary there's no way around it so having a business bank account completely changed my life mm -hmm. now i i now i'm clear i can see i can i can predict down the future in in the you know five months and what's going to happen based upon the activity in my business bank account versus my personal bank account and those being two separate just having these two things on paper is gonna, and not just going to help you personally it's going to help every aspect of your life your relationships your confidence, your development. I, I'm just saying, he might be just talking about having these two separate things, but I'm saying these are the things that I've experienced, man, just by making these simple changes. And you'd be surprised how many people say they're in business, but they're really not in business. They're really not. And they can mm. just make a few, few different changes and bam, it's going to it's gonna be a symbol to their, to their whole entire bodies, their spirit, that this is different. And now I can move accordingly. It's crazy. Now, Tech, I got I got a quick question. When you say that it's changed your life, give me some examples of how it's changed your life. Uh All right. a business. Here's a perfect example. So, so I have I so I only use credit cards. Right. I, Bingo. I yeah, I don't use cash at all. Bingo. Right. So and I'm gonna break that down why you only should use credit cards. We're going to hit that. So here's, and I hope he dives into this because it's really a simple switch. <laughs> it really is. Like the difference between a rich person and a poor person isn't the amount of money you have in your bank. It really isn't. It's really just the way that you approach how you manage what you do have. You got to just manage what you do have. So I only use credit cards because I understand that I borrow from myself and not from other institutions. And therefore I pay myself back. I don't pay other institutions back. Mm -hmm. So just using that concept alone, that's how it's changed. So now I have a business bank account that can feed into my personal bank account that can pay me, right? You gotta pay yourself first. That's 
I ain't, I'm sorry. If you only make 50k a year or 20k a year or 500 thousand dollars a year, it doesn't matter. You so essentially, be, you are the bank. You created your own bank. Absolutely. So therefore, by me understanding that concept again, not the amount of money, it's just understanding the concept that has now allowed me to be able to move in a way that why I don't carry any credit card debt because I'm able to borrow from myself and not pay back Bank of America, Wells Fargo, uh, American Express, or whatever. I pay myself back. And now I move like a business or like an established entity would. And this and it is what it's, it's, it's a night, night and day game changer, man, to me. And I think most people who are confused about business, sometimes they work themselves and work themselves and they work and work more and they're not leveraging some of these tools that are available to them. So, you know, that's why we're here though. And you know, that's why we're here to break this information down, get uh, get this info out to the family and uh, hopefully you guys, you know, make some changes and, and if we can help, then this is how we do it, man. All right. So, um, I'm unable to upload these slides, so we'll go into the first uh, catastrophe to avoid. So the first one is poor financial management. London, I, I think you could gangster boogie on this one. Yeah, so that's such a, I would say, general and broad concept for poor, you know, having poor financials because... And business, one of the, I would say one of the biggest mistakes I see when it comes to new LLCs, when it comes to small business owners, that's, uh, or even established business owners who really haven't took the time to make sure that they back office is in position because that's really important. So when you go to get some of these financial products, especially when you're dealing with business loans and business lines of credit, see, that's one thing we have to differentiate uh the different financial products because for in most cases we go to a financial institution let's take chase bank for example and you guys go in there right you are confident you just created your llc you walk in there you big ceo style and you say hey i'm a big ceo what's up big ceo need a loan the first thing that's going to come to that business relationship manager or that sales rep whoever is in our financial institution they're going to say well we need documentations right we need tax returns, two-year tax returns. We need bank statements. We need um, uh, not only personal tax returns, but business tax returns. We need P&L statements. We need cash flow statements. We need balance sheets, right? We need all these different types of documentation. We need paycheck stubs, right? We need three to six months bank statements. So we need all these documentation. Plus we need a business plan on top of that. And we need a little dab of your blood and your firstborn baby blood. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But that's the I would say that's the mindset how we think about it when they ask for all those documentation like man they need everything under the sun and you're right because it's all about risk but here's the thing what you don't know when you first went into that financial institution and you asked for a business loan you are already positioning yourself to fail because there's different type of products out there. When you ask for a business loan, yes, they're going to ask for those all those documentations. So your back office needs to be in position. So, for example, if you're co-mingling, and I'm going to dive into different financial products. So right now, I'm specifically talking about business loans and business lines of credit a little bit, too. But there's different ways to get the banks uh, uh, to get money from the banks. We're going to dive into that a little bit later. But to stick on this subject, when you're co-mingling funds. For example, did you know you're technically not in business until you have a business checking account? I don't care when you establish your articles or organization, right? Uh, most people most people say, I ask them, hey, how long you been in business? Oh, man, I've been doing this for 10 years. Then I do a follow-up question. Okay, well, how long you have your articles or organization, your LLC or your S-Corp or whatever separate entity that you form? Oh, man, I just did that a year ago. Okay, perfect. How long have you had a business checking account? Two months ago. Well, technically, you're not in business in the eyes of a lender. You've only been established for two months. Why? Because lenders and creditors want to track your payment data. They want to see your, your banking history. That's going to determine if you're an established business owner or not. That's going to determine part of your risk factor. So we definitely want to make sure that first thing we do to get a business checking account, right? That's one of the most, not the first thing, but that's one of the most important things that we do. So now we got a business checking account. Now we don't have to co-mingle our funds. Right. How do we prevent that? How do we 
uh, if we want to pay ourselves, how do we do that? Well, we have a business chain account. Next thing we have to do is get a payment processor. So which means you got to get somebody that I partner with called ADP that I teach all my mentees and all the people that I um, specialize in helping them get business funding and get partner with ADP, which is the largest uh, payroll provider. Some of you probably got ADP on here right now or you received your paycheck from ADP. Right. They help millions of people, um, primarily 50 percent of small business owners. They help. Uh, that's what they specialize in. So quick plug real quick. Go to my link, you get 15% off, and you get three months free if you sign up with ADP through me, uh, which is really huge. Why? Because now you're not transferring your business to your personal. Did you know you get no credit from these financial institutions when you transfer these funds? They see your business as a liability. That's the worst thing. You don't want to position your business as a liability. So when you're co-mingling your funds, and trust me, I did this like back in 2000, what, 17 all the way to 2019. I'm co-mingling my funds, right? Just making that transfer. So once you position your business properly, now you're opening up for more financial products. Now you position yourself to get a, a business loan. Why? Because now you position yourself as a W-2 employee of your company and not big CEO, right? Not big CEO popping your collar. So now you only have to provide limited documentations as a propo um, proposed to providing all those other documentation that they will add when you're asking for a business loan. I'm um, keeping emphasis on that because, again, I want to differentiate the different products that we're going to go over a little bit later. So when you're going to ask for a business loan, yes, you will have to make sure that your back office is set. You will have to make sure that you're paying yourself. Um, that could be monthly. That can be weekly, bi-weekly, whatever. But you're paying yourself a, a, a paycheck. Now, it doesn't have to be a, a, a form of paycheck, right? You can do direct deposit. That's paying yourself. Uh, but you separate yourself from the business. Now, here's the great thing about it. And I'm going to leave it at this. Here's the great thing about it. When you're paying yourself, did you know now you have double the revenue? So not only you can have credit for your business revenue, but now you have credit for your personal revenue, your personal income. So you get double the revenue when you're trying to apply for these um, financial products, specifically a business loan. And now it's going to lower your debt to income ratio. Right. I'm going to explain what a DTI. If you don't know what a DTI is, I'm going to give you the formula. But. I'll explain that a little bit later, but you lowering your debt to income ratio. So which is huge. So we have to properly set our business up. So when we when we need a capital, we are already prepared. See, most of you right now, you wait until you're back against the wall and say, oh, I need a loan. I need a million dollars back in 30 days. I need a million dollars in, in two weeks. But the data points doesn't say that you can get a million dollars. Hell, any of them say you can get ten thousand dollars because you're not properly positioned, right? So I hope that makes sense. And I'm um, gonna pass it to you, Tech or or whoever, Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, I appreciate that, bro. Um, so we're we're gonna go right into number two, uh, Tech. Okay. I think this would be really good for you, bro. Um, so number two says the lack of market understanding. Uh, so. The solution that I have on there right now is conduct thorough uh, market research to understand customer needs and preferences, analyze competitors and tailor marketing strategies according accordingly. Utilize customer feedback. What do you say about a uh, lack of market understanding uh, for small businesses? Yeah, I, well, specifically to the notary industry, but I think this could apply across the board, but specifically to what notaries do when notaries don't understand what it is that they actually do, they can't define it. They can't give a definition to what they do. Then it's going to be difficult for a customer to <clears throat> actually understand that. So let me, for instance, you ask the question, well, what is a notary? Or somebody asked you, Hey, what do you do? I'm a notary. What is a notary? A notary is the person who deters fraud or who authenticates signatures. Yeah, on the surface, that's what it is. But when we talk about marketing and we talk about advertising, we talk about getting clients and having a business, understanding what the word business is, meaning that's to transfer value from one, one person to another person or from one entity, entity to another entity. So if you can't define what it is that's what you do, or if you give some type of dictionary definition as to what it is, which is 
oh, I'm a person who deters fraud. Well, yeah, of course. I'm a person of integrity. Well, of course, that's the entry point. That's what it takes to actually do this. Well, yeah, I'm background check. Well, yeah, we understand those things. Oh, yeah, and I witness signatures, and then I stamp document. Well, of course, everybody with a commission can do that. But what I'm saying, understanding what the market is looking for, this is where you start to define what it is that you do. And this is why it becomes very simple to get clients and to find um, opportunities for marketing. So when somebody says, hey, Tech, what is a notary? See, my answer is it depends who's asking. Depends. Because if you're a lawyer or if you're a person who's trying to serve a, a, a restraining order to their boyfriend, or you're a person who's trying to uh, set up their boss for an appointment at their office, it depends. See, I'm going to answer the question based upon what you respond with my question back to you, which is who's signing your document? How many people are signing it? And do they all have ID? And can I actually get to them? Because I understand that this is about urgency. I understand that it's about getting an answer to these three data points. Where are you? Who's there? And do they all have ID? If you can answer yes to that to my checklist, then I can be wherever you need to, me to be at whatever time, half an hour, or we can do it later at 530. So I understand that the person who's calling me, they're not looking for a notary per se. They are, but they're not, right? They're looking for somebody to come answer this specific question for this power of attorney that's inside this intensive care unit in the next 45 minutes. It's very, very specific. And on top of that, that person is probably less than 55 years old. That person probably understands some technology. That person probably doesn't mind swiping their credit card electronically. That person probably, see, that person fits into a specific mold. That's because I'm defining what this person is looking for. There are some people that need it for $2. <laughs> and they try to get all of that for $2. I need you to come to my house. And I've got some witnesses traveling from out of town. And we are gathering together so that we can sign this power of attorney for my mother who's dying. Oh, yeah, by the way, I only have $4 in my pocket. But I need you to come to me right now. On the other hand, there's a woman who says, my car just got stolen. I've been dealing with the insurance company for the last two weeks. They've sent me this document that says I have to go get it signed. I'm in front of your office right now. Can I get into the building? You're like, no, we don't have a building. But you still need that document signed, don't you? Yes, I do. Here's how we can help you. So I'm addressing that specific person's question. Oh, by the way, the price it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, still got to get it done. It's just a matter of what time do you need it. So my marketing, and this applies to it, whether you wash car windows, whether you... You know, you're a landscaper. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you sell ice on the freeway. If you're answering that, that person's specific question, then, you know, that line of marketing to me or uh, fitting into that, into your specific market, piece of cake, piece of cake. Or it becomes more fun. Let me put it that way. It's way more fun because you can understand the client a little bit better. And then the clients want this. They, they look for this. They, they're like, this is why I called. <laughs> this is why I reached out. I didn't reach out to be interrogated. Hmm. I didn't reach out to talk to a lawyer. <laughs> I don't want to be questioned. I don't want you to be looking into my bank account. I came so I can so I, I can get this piece of paper signed. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. So and then you start throwing in the technology, which makes it much more simplified. You know, make it more streamlined. You know, as long as you are a service provider, then this. I think the logic applies, you know, as long as you provide a service, you can find a customer who's looking for it. It's just a matter of how you communicate that message and whether or not, you know, you know, it, it's you don't have to use crazy language and out of date tech techniques. You got to actually speak to what the person looking for, but define who you are first, define what it is that you do. Indeed. So we're, we'll go right into number three. <clears throat> um, ineffective. Well, the number three reason why small businesses fail um, is ineffective marketing and strategies. So the solution would be develop a comprehensive marketing plan targeting the right audience 
through various channels such as social media, email, marketing campaigns, SEO, networking events. Um, hold on, let me bring up the other one. Invest in sales training for staff to improve conversion rates. Now, I know this for a fact, uh, and I guess I'll gangster boogie on this one, fellas. Mm -hmm. um, you're not selling to yourself. So I know that a lot of people uh, will mark up a price on one of their products and they'll say, uh, nobody will buy at that price. The reason you're saying that is because you wouldn't buy at that price. So you're mm -hmm. you're forcing your buying habits onto your customers, and that's a no-no. A second thing that you need to stop assuming is uh, pocket watching. A lot of um, business owners, especially small business owners, they'll pocket watch a customer and don't realize that they're discounting or counting out a certain type of customer uh, because they, they're they like, okay, I'll give you an example. You don't like Louis Vuitton. You don't like Gucci. You think the, the pricing of the purses are too expensive. Uh, a Rolex watch going for $15,000 is ridiculous. You could go to Walmart or Target and buy a, a nice watch for $20, $25. That's you forcing your buying habits. And that is also you counting the pockets of your customer. Your customer may have a dozen Louis Vuitton bags. Your yeah. customer may be a mm. watch fanatic and have all type of watches on there. So the fact that you're pushing uh, your lack of knowledge on sales and marketing is really, really hurting your business. And I think all three of us got something to talk about on that one. London, uh, I'll ask you, what, what do you think about that? Uh, no, I think that was very well said. Uh, and the primary reason why, to me, it always go back to lack of capital. Uh, but there's different ways you can market without having an abundance of capital behind you. And we'll definitely dive into that. But I want to focus on the market strategy when you do have access to capital. Because there's a saying in business, you can go, you can go maybe six months, 12 months, 24 months without landing profit in your business, but you can't go not one day without cash. My mm -hmm. interpretation is that you may, it may take you a while to turn a profit, but if you constant have access to cash, whether that's a line of credit, business credit cards, an investor investing into your business, you will be okay. You won't fall into insolvency, right? Because you're constantly pumping money into your, you got a well oil machine. But most individuals, the reason why they can't grow their business is because we have no marketing budget, right? We, we don't have capital to invest into marketing. So that's the reason why we're not growing or scaling, right? You have to have a marketing budget, right? You think you're going to grow your business and not able to um, have systems in place for emails, right? Go email list. How do you do that? Well, give out some free. Let them subscribe to your email. Um and that starts with like having a funnel. So you need marketing. Maybe you got to pay a team or maybe you got to learn how to do it yourself. So you got to invest in someone that you know, like and trust that'll help you create that marketing system. Right. So now you have to get a, a, a CRM. So that's huge when you come to business. So marketing is huge. It's practically everything. So I, I ask these, I ask people all the time. People always want to make a million dollars right, or more. How much money you want to make in your business? I want to make a million dollars to get all the sight. But ex their expectation is for a million dollars to drop in their lap. Like it's just going to come to you. No, but what if I told you you have to invest $750,000 in your company in order to make a million dollars? What if hmm. I told you you have to invest $500,000 in your company? See, that simple concept of spending money to make money goes out the window. Right. We all want to be business owners. We all want to make all this money, but we forget that we actually have to spend money. Right. But what I teach you, it doesn't have to be your money. That's the whole idea behind it. That's the whole strategy behind it. But don't get it twisted. You you do have to spend money, but it can be the bank money to make money. So you might need to. I know you definitely need to have a marketing campaign. Right. 
So marketing is essential. You have to invest into marketing in order to grow and scale your business. There's no way around. And there's different forms of marketing. Like I said, you can do bootstraps. You can um, now we got social media. That's going to be form of, of marketing. But eventually, mm -hmm. in order for you to get to that, that number, if you want to get to a really high number, you have to have a marketing team, right? You have to have a marketing budget. You know, you have to invest in all type of things. You got ads, you have Googles, right? You have to mm -hmm. get the email systems, right? You have to get all these things in order to grow and scale your business after you start it. So again, it all comes down to capital, having capital in order to do that. See, most of you are stuck doing $10 jobs because you mm -hmm. have the lack of capital. So now you, 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 you the person who take out your own trash. You the person who send the emails. You the person who answer the phone calls. You the person uh, uh, that's running your marketing uh, planner, right? So you do everything in your business. So these are called ten dollar job because you have the you don't have the capital to um, to delegate that responsibility to other people. That's good. All right. Yeah, that's solid. That's solid. And, and that I'm glad you said that because it runs right into our next one. And tech that you could definitely take the lead on this. Uh, it goes into inadequate operational management. Mm. So uh, number four reason why small businesses fail is inadequate operational management. Um, Solution would be to streamline the process, delegate, as London just said, delegate tasks effectively, invest in technology and automation. And that's why I thought you'd do great with this one, Tech. Uh, tools to mm -hmm. increase efficiency and ensure clear communication. Talk on that, brother. Man, shout out to y'all, man. Shout out to everybody who's actually in on the sales training. And man, I'm so happy we got London in the building too to add that extra, extra layer of hot sauce. No soul. doubt, no doubt. Yep. Man, because I I love, love that answer. And that helped me a lot. Your answer just helped me. So I hope everybody else got that. But speaking about inadequate operational management, which that, like you said, it goes right into what we were just discussing. So this is a sales training, ain't it? Yes, indeed. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Sales training. So I'm going to break this down, man. The lack of capital to me is because I would, as you were talking about it, I was thinking to myself, why would somebody not be confident in marketing their business? I'm thinking lack of capital, absolutely. The reason why I felt confident in Number one, I felt confident because I felt secure that I actually had a business, meaning I had a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step process to take somebody who was interested in what I was looking for and being able to deliver it. I could name in seven steps what this person will, I can basically tell them their future. You're gonna call me, like Lennon said, I'm not gonna be the person who answers it. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be an answer. There's going to be a response. That person, if they need further assistance, then they could then call or speak to a live person. If from there, that person's problem was, we would determine that they needed one passport application in the city of Chicago at 2.30, then we could qualify a person to go out and execute that assignment for them. They could pay us. We could then send a review request. They could then post that other readers who were because we advertise and because we invest into getting our name out there another person could read that other person's positive experience and then the cycle could just repeat itself so now at some point we so this is our operational strategy and now it but like Lana said at the base it starts with to me the access to capital, then the confidence that you actually have a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step process. And you're you're secure with that too. Now, the automation side of it is interesting because it's impossible to scale without it. Or it's impossible rather to scale or to grow if you do everything. Put it that Agree. Way. You got automated or, dele or delegated. Automated so or delegated. I definitely agree with that. You have to offset some of your responsibility. You can't do everything, man. You just can't. Nor <laughs> should you. 
No, right. no. Why would you want to do everything? Right? Tiger, you always say this. You're the visionary. You're the person who's the leader. You're the CEO. You drive the seat. You're the mm -hmm. captain of the Starship Enterprise. You, you know what I'm saying? You're the mm -hmm. person who leads the ship. Absolutely. And I 100% uh, uh, agree with that. And so what's some simple ways that you could introduce automation in some of these operational strategies? Well, think about, again, do you actually have a business? That's the question. Do you actually have a step-by-step -step process for, for you to transfer money from one person to another person or transfer value from one person to another person? You do. If you have a notary business, that's just one example. But if you have, if you are solving, if you're answering somebody's question, then as an entrepreneur, then you actually have, you know, a way to make that easier, simpler, make it faster, make it more, you know, efficient, make it cheaper or make it more expensive. I don't know however you want to go about that. But the automation is interesting because the email is perfect. I had a guy who just recently left a review and said, you know, when he booked the appointment, he actually paid and immediately he got some emails triggered to give him more, even more confidence. And he felt even more secure that he made the right choice because there was constant communication. But hey, I'm not calling him though. <laughs> I'm not the one calling this guy. I can't send him text messages and send him emails that let him know that somebody's in route to his home to meet with his wife. You know, people have confidence issues about that. You want to meet, you want men meeting women in their in their homes. There's some issues around that. So you investing in your ability to market and your ability to to look excellent on paper and to actually follow through with that that's a business you know that's how you and it, it requires your investment and it should because it, whatever you invest you get it right back oh i like what you just said um i tell people all the time uh not only credit but business it's all about perception do you look good on paper so yeah. we have to make sure that we properly look good on paper right making it a full established business because at the end of the day when it comes to your business it's it's if you're in business to you have to have an extra strategy so or eventually you will have an extra strategy right uh you might sell or or right you might have other people come in and invest in your company so that could be part of your extra strategy but it's all about how they perceive your business so if you don't have the automations if you don't have staff if you don't have the systems if you don't have a clean process where um, everything is running smoothly, right? You, of course, you got to have a good product or a service, right? So that's all in running a full business because there's a difference between a self employer, a business, or a small business, a big business. All that is different. A side hustle, it's all different. And it starts with how you run your business. And marketing is huge when it comes to that, your marketing and branding strategy behind you because most people buy into you, not really like Apple. Like the name is Apple. So simple. Tiger talk about this all the time. Right. So your personal brand is can be way bigger than your than the brand of your company. So and, and it, when I say your personal brand, I'm talking about you, but I'm also talking about the people who's actually working with you, your team yes. and your systems and your automations. All that mm -hmm. is your branding. Yes. Just wanted to add that. Yeah. No, I love it. Love it. So I hope you guys are getting value from this. Uh, we're uh unraveling the five pitfalls and catastrophes that small businesses make. If you guys have to review this video and, and kind of like go over, I would hate for it. It makes no sense where um, small businesses are, are coming up in the game and they're making the same mistakes over and over and over mm -hmm. again. And you're like, all right, I got to start up a new uh, corporation. And, it, you know, it never gets past the three year mark. Because yeah. one of these five or maybe all five is affecting your business. So we're going to go into number five and then we do have a bonus one for you. But before we do that, we're going to go into a quick commercial break. And, uh, you know, as they say, uh, pay some of these bills around the house. Yeah. Opus Clip turns your long form videos into short clips in one click. Opus Clip is powered by AI and it can create 30 clips in 15 minutes and outperform any manual video editing by saving 90% of time and tons of money. Opus Clip is so hot right now, it's like trying to get tickets to a Beyonce concert. So get Opus Clip now. Don't be the person who hears about it later and goes, 
Dang, I should have listened to Tiger Tolita. Go ahead. Be the cool one in your squad. Try Opus Clip today for free. Just click the link in the description. Number five. Failure to adopt the change adapt the change. In London, uh, you helped me out a lot with this. So to stay informed about industry trends and technological advancement, be open to innovation and be willing to pivot strategies or offerings as needed to meet evolving customers because customers are getting smarter every single day, ladies and gentlemen. Every single day, customers are getting smarter. I promise you this because if you look 10 years ago, people were very hesitant to put their credit card into, you know, an Amazon or a website. Today, they let the website store their credit card. That's how right. efficient and streamlined right. this thing has become. That's and a great point. One of the reasons why I wanted to uh, bring you in on this one, London, is because I look at uh, my YouTube experience of my failure to adapt change. I was I started in youth on YouTube about. 2007. I was using 2007 methods in 2024. Mm. Truth, truth be told, I was stuck at 776 subscribers for the longest, like damn near two years, yo. And it was frustrating as hell. And, it, you know, London mentored me and kind of coached me up on it. And then right now I'm at 997 in like a couple of months. Nice, so, nice. That failure to adapt the change is mm. so crucial. That's like a person saying, I don't like to use computers in my business. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to paper file everything. <laughs> so let, let talk about that, London. You got the stage, brother. Well, when it comes to, right, uh, we all know everything is changing. We have the media. We have YouTube. YouTube is the biggest platform there is as far as when it comes to content, right? It's higher than, especially search engine, right? It's higher than um, TikTok to Instagram to Facebook, right? All of those. So it took me a while to adjust to YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. I only been on YouTube for about six, seven months, right? So when I first started, the first thing I did, I was procrastinating the whole entire time. I don't know, for a year, year and a half, I always told myself being on, be on YouTube. But I, I know, I know what I know, right? As far as when it comes to credit, when it comes to business, right? I've been in business since 2014. I started my first limousine company out here uh, in Chicago, Illinois, my brother and I. So, and we never looked back. Been an entrepreneur ever since 2014. Uh, I say that to say this. It's so many changes <laughs> that I've been through in my business because of not only the world, but uh, my learning experience, my me learning about um, cash, me learning about credit, me learning about relationships, me learning about investors, right? I've done it all. I had all types of different types of loans you can think of, all different types of financial products. So I had to constantly evolve. Like when I first got into business, everything was cash. I sold my car 2000, what, 2008? Well, I bought the car in 2008. I'm sorry, I sold it in 2012. After six months paying it off, went through Chase Bank, paid off, sold it six months later, used tax money, used family and friends to invest into my first party bus in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Bring it back out here, made a lot of money, but went through a lot of trials and errors because we didn't. We was ignorant to the fact of credit. We was using the money that we was making in our business to reinvest in back to our company. Maintenance issues, you're talking about $10,000 transmission went out, you're talking about $5,000 breaks. You talking about two thousand dollars for air conditioning on and off. So we have all these unexpected expenses that we have to constantly put into our business that we was making in the business. So we was just going around this cycle like this until I'm like, it has to be a better way. So again, this this comes with change, right? Pivoting, understanding that things evolve. You have to evolve as a person, right? Dealing with technology and all these different things. So that's when I learned about business credit. Hey, what do we use? What do we get a loan? Right. What do we do this? What do we go this route as opposed to using our own money? So that way we have some cash freed up because credit is not king. Cash is not king. Cash flow is king. That positive cash flow that you get every month. 
it was sucking us dry. So I had to pivot, right, to, to start using the bank's money. That was part of my change in the business. I had to stop using my cash and use credit. And the rest is history. But then 2020, I have to pivot again. Again, another change, the pandemic. I'm sure this hurt a lot of businesses. I, I know it hurt my um, limousine company. So I lost two of my vehicles. I lost the party bus and I lost the SUV and sort of lost, I lost the Sprinter. So really three vehicles. So I had to pivot, right? What I'm going to do, right? I learned from that though. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't rely on one company or two companies to give you a uh, majority of your contracts. So I have to learn from that. So now I have to pivot. You know what? I love credit. I've been learning a lot about credit. I've been dealing with credit. Let me start teaching people about credit. Right. And how business credit, business funding and how as a new LLC, you can get access to capital no matter where you are in your business. Just all about, you know, uh, you don't lack a cre credit problem or a cash problem. You lack a strategy problem. Right. Because you don't have the proper information and knowledge to execute on that strategy to go ahead and, 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 and get a results that you want because of lack of strategy. So I have to learn that. But I have to pivot. Uh, because something happened in my business. So. That's you constantly have to change in business, whether it's technology with this AI, right? Chat GPT, whether it's uh, different things that's coming out, uh, that's constantly coming out, changing the way we think, changing the way we view uh, 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 certain things in our business. So you have to evolve in your business. So that's part of my experience and involvement in my business. And you may have to get help. That's part of the thing too, right? Mm -hmm. We 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 want to try to reinvent the wheel. You don't do that, right? What you do is you get with somebody that you know, like a trust that you want to do business with, that you can relate with. That's part of, Hey, I want to do like that, but doing it my own unique way. And here's the thing about it. Most people, when I say reinvent the wheel, right? I also mean it's okay to copy, right? You can, you can copy somebody else Everybody, nobody is, 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 it's only one guy, right? He's the main creator. But when we create, we, we, we see something or subconsciously we see something and we make it into our own, right? Just think of the cell phones, how much it evolved, how much it evolved. Because people build out that one cell phone, build out that cell phone. And a person that did the first cell phone got something off something that made him do the cell phone. So, or he, she, or whoever it was, I don't know who invented the cell phone, but I'm just making a point, right? As far as it's okay to copy, it's okay to pivot, it's okay to reinvent yourself because everything is constantly growing. So then fast forward, now I'm on YouTube, the first thing I did was just turn on the camera. Mm -hmm. After I turned on the camera, I was off, I just did it. Then I started learning, I started reading books, I started studying YouTube, right? I really started doing my due diligence, spending time, resources, energy on how can I grow my YouTube? Fast forward later, seven months later, I got almost 30,000 subscribers, over a million views, right? Because from my previous experience from the party bus and, and credit business, I learned that you have to adapt and you have to change in order to grow and scale. And not just from a monetary perspective, but also just from a mental uh, perspective too as well. Well said, brother. Well said. What about you, Tech? Yeah, congratulations on that too, London. Shout out, man. Yeah, oh, a man. million views, a, a million in yeah, seven man. months. It's been a journey. It's been a journey. Appreciate that, fellas. Yeah, absolutely, man. What you what I really heard in there, and I spoke, and you kind of spoke to this as well, is uh how important a mentor is. Yeah. Yeah, man. Somebody who can show you the way. You can find somebody who's going to the top or at least going in the direction you're going, not the opposite direction, right? Um, go follow that person, man. Follow that person that you know, like, and trust. And, uh, you know, it's to me, the, the mentorship, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know how it can be substituted. I mean, you can try to figure out things on your own, but, um, you know, it just takes longer. And the faster you learn, the faster you're going to get results. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you can learn quicker and you could be real with yourself and evaluate yourself and say, listen, I need to. All right. This is what I learned for, for the last month. And <laughs> let me implement this quickly. And for small business owners, the nice thing about that is that you don't have to go through several different uh, bureaucratic channels and, and upper level management and supervisors and approvals and things like that. Right. 
you can just go right into it and start it the next day. There's times I've talked to Tiger, got off the phone right with him, and then the price went up for something, you know, and we tried to <laughs> strategy straight up. I would try things right there on the phone with him, right? How many times have you taken the right. phone? Right. Yesterday's right. price is not today's price. <laughs> yeah. And, Facts. And, you know, and I, I kind of share uh, some of those examples of being innovative, you know, being innovative and thinking outside of the norm. And, uh, you know, those high-low techniques. Like, we would try it right there on the spot. And, and Tiger's like, put me on the phone with it right now. And uh, <laughs> let's let's try to get this deal done. But um, but I want to uh, share something with you guys as far as um, how I approach business and why I think it's more fun when you start to innovate and be creative and really try to put your stamp on, like you said, in London. You take what's already existing and then you really try to put your own swag and put your own style onto it. Mm-hmm. Like, you ever been doing something important and then somebody like interrupts it? Like, Absolutely. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time, Absolutely. right? Isn't that what a service industry is, or isn't that what a business is? You were mm. existing, you were doing what you were doing, you were cooking, you were with your family, taking a shower, sleeping, and then a phone call comes in, and then the email comes in. You were already doing something important, and then that thing just interrupts and derails kind of what you were thinking, or what that that line of thinking you were on. And just in case you're not getting this, allow me to kind of illustrate this example. So you're working on your budget for your business, whatever. And then your wife or your brother or somebody, a relative text you and say, they send you a picture of, of a, a, a beautiful looking cake. And you're like, damn, I just baked this cake. You want to try it? You were doing something very important. And then now your attention is on this cake. You're like, yeah, I would love to try it. And then you go back to doing what you were doing. And then three minutes later, they send you another follow-up message saying, Okay, I'll save you some. Now you got derailed again. And you're like, okay. But in business, this is how I kind of address that. And this is why I'm saying the quicker you can learn, the faster you can implement these things. When I was working with <clears throat> notary clients or potential prospect notary clients, I'm, I'm let me teach you something here. A notary, you're probably living your life, you're probably single, one person, one woman show you're doing something that you were already planning on doing. And then a phone call comes in from a signing service, from a title company, from a private client. They just jumped into your daily mix. They interrupted you. Can I have a notary appointment? No, that's not always what they say, but just using that as an example. And then you say yes. And then there's this back and forth exchange, just like the person who sent you the cake. You said, they're like, oh, you want to try it? Like, yes. They're like, okay, I'll save you some. You're like, okay, when can I come get it? Uh, maybe today at three. Um, I'm not available at three. What about tomorrow at 11? Uh, well, just knock on the door and make sure you bring some Tupperware. Oh, see, there's a back and forth exchange. Mm-hmm. Now, here's a smarter way to go about that. And this is what I did. And this is what I implemented in my notary business. Let you guys in on this sort of behind the scenes. Somebody interrupts me during my day. I'm on a sales training call or I'm driving or you're at work because you have a full-time job or you're hanging out with your kids. And then you get a message. It says, are you available for a notary? I'm saying, proverbially speaking, from a private client, they're inquiring about your services. Instead of saying, yes, I am, or no, I'm not. What I would do, and this is what I've implemented, so speaking of what London saying, putting your personality into your, into your business. Yes, I am. If you meet these three requirements, if you are in the city, you have these number of signatures, you have valid ID, here's how you can take the next step and then book an appointment for today at 2.30, 3.30, or 4.45. And then they take the next step as opposed to doing this back and forth exchange where you're going back and forth trying to figure out or negotiate what's going on. If they agree to that first message, then we've shortened, we've essentially shortened that amount of contact time and we've made it more of an automated streamlined process. Mentorship, see, somebody can point that out to you, right? If you didn't understand that, well, can somebody compartment up, uh, can you like sort of break that down and um, make it into smaller chunks so that you can understand that concept? Now, all of a sudden, you understand business. Oh, it clicks. This is how I communicate. This is how I price. 
this is how I negotiate if they object to what to what the terms are. If they don't, or if they meet only two check part, check points out of the three, that's where mentorship comes in. And I think it's essential to any business growth. And I just want to illustrate that example about how you know there's it's a minefield out there. It's, it's all these explosives and there's mm -hmm. all these traps. And you'll get caught in them every single time if you didn't see it coming. So I love it. I you know I love the opportunity to work with other people, and I'm glad that you guys are on the sales training to learn how to you know learn a little bit of background information about business and and what has worked for us and could work for you. Indeed, well well put, brother. So I wanted to um, before we go into the bonus, I want to uh, announce book of the week. The book of the week is 10x is easier than 2x. The link is in the description. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm on my second week with this book. I probably already listened to it. I have the audio version. I'm, I, I'm not that big of a reader, but I'm a great listener, right? And um, I'm on my second and a half week of this. It is transformative. That's the best thing I could say about it. It's transformative. Um, Myron Golden, anybody that follows Myron Golden would know that uh, this is a book that he highly recommends. Um, what it does, it shows you how to get more done in less time and make more money and leverage uh, your opportunities and your networking ability. It, it's, it's a phenomenal book. I would highly recommend that you, uh, it's a recommended read. Check it out. You, you'd like it. Um, so let's go into the last one, which is the, 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 the bonus one of how to avoid a catastrophe in a small business. Hold on one second. Let me pull it up for you guys. And you guys should see it in the comment section as well on YouTube. But let me pull this. So this is it. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people that uh, eat at restaurants, would pro uh, West Indian restaurants specifically, would probably experience this. The bonus one is poor customer service and retention. Mm -hmm. Prioritize excellent first class customer service by training staff to be attentive, responsive, and empathetic. Implement loyalty programs, solicit feedback. And add, let me add a uh, customer concerns promptly to build long term relationships and enhance retention rates. Now, I can tell you anytime I go to a West Indian restaurant, whether it's a Haitian restaurant or it's a Jamaican restaurant or it's a Trinidadian restaurant, there's always some food that's not available. <laughs> and they look at you and they say, uh, Let me get that oxtail. No more oxtail. Let me get some griot uh, Julia Pois. We don't have no more of that. Nah, no <laughs> let, <laughs> let me Come get back tomorrow, two o'clock. Right. Let me get a chicken roti. No, we don't have no more of that until next week. Like I called you. You said you had that. Yeah. That's yeah. why I'm here right now. I pre-ordered it. Oh, oh, can I go? Can I go with that? That's a great example. That's a great example. So <laughs> that's why I'm sure most, I'm sure you listening to this, you experienced that with car dealerships. Mm. Put, us, put us all back on the thing, Ty, real quick. Car yeah. dealerships, because I want y'all to, to uh, be engaged with this too. So, right, a car dealership, they tell you, you get on the phone with them, <laughs> and you say, hey, you know, my credit score is not in position. I got limited funds. I need to, you know, I need a car, though. Oh, yeah, come down here. We do 580 560 credit scores, you good to go. We can get you a lender. We got a lender down here. You get down there. The first thing they tell you after they run your credit is what? You don't you need qualify a for shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You don't qualify or you need a co-signer, right? That's the man. Right. Oh, now you're calling grandma up. You're calling your ex guy up that, <laughs> that you ain't talked to in a while. You want them to co-sign. So that's part of that. And now you you like, man, this car dealership is whack, right? You'll probably never go back again. First of all, you probably spent five, six hours in there before they told you you need a co-signer. So after they told you over the phone that everything is going to be good. So that's part of the, the lack of, I, I just thought of that dealing with the people I talk to, right? Whether you're trying to get a business all along or whether you 
were trying to get a, a personal car that these car dealerships, knowing your credit is not in position, right? Knowing the income is probably is, is not there. Knowing you don't have the proper documents to get a car, but they still tell you to come down there. Now you got this bit of sweet in your mouth. Then when they do sell your car, let's say you have a 580 credit score because they went through a subprime lender, which is a different from a prime lender. A subprime mm -hmm. lender can practically get you approved for just about anything. You can have a three credit score, right? Or <laughs> a, a, a really low credit score that you really can't even finance a snicker bar, but they can get you approved for a car loan. Yeah, <laughs> but it's going to come with 30% interest on the back end and your down payment is going to be ridiculous. So on a 2004 car, right? So there's ways, again, there's strategies and ways for them to actually, that's why they keep you in there for five hours trying to get you approved through a subprime lender. Or they might have in-house financing to try to get you approved. But that's poor customer service, right? They not creating a win-win situation. I'm huge on win-win because everybody have the mindset Majority of people, I won't say everybody, but majority of people have the mindset, uh, especially new LLC or small business owners, what's in it for me, right? That's the wrong concept to think about, wrong ideology. What's in it for me? Because guess what? The next person is thinking, what's in it for me, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So somebody has to say, okay, let me just serve this individual to the best ability that I can, right? What do this person want? So if one person give in, and it should be you as the business owner, how can I serve this person? What does, does this person really want? That's what the main three questions I ask, and it's in one part, whenever you ever talk to me as far as consultation one-on-one, -on -one, how much funding do you need? When do you need it by? Right? How much funding do you need? When do you need it by? And I always ask them, too, as far as the bonus when I ask them that. But most people say, hey, well, I need a million dollars. When you need it by 30 days. What? And then a bonus question, what do you need it for? I don't know. I just need capital. Like, you don't, it's, it's not, so that type of answer let me know you're not serious. I still take you serious. But if you come in and you say, hey, I need a million dollars, I need 30 days. First of all, the, the data points is no way, you know, way near a million dollars in 30 days. It's a little ridiculous. And then you don't even know why you need a million dollars for so, but I still, hey, let's break this down, right? What's some of the things, you know, now I go a little bit deeper because I really want to know why you think you need a million dollars, but you really just need, I don't know, 25,000, 50,000, 100,000, right? So really care and really be diligent about your customers. And I promise you'll get that return on your investment 10 times that return on investment will really come in. So. That's my two cents. What would you say about uh, um, poor customer service tech? Yeah, it, it's impossible to do it and survive. I don't think it's possible. You can't make it because, you know, listen, this in this society that we live in, you can, you have options. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't mm -hmm. have to work with you. Right. I right. you sell tires for half mm -hmm. off. I might not just be looking for the price for the cheapest thing or for you to give me a deal. I might be looking for the best service. And if I'm looking for the best service, I'm gonna go to the where the you know wherever the best service is located. So, you know, it does a disservice to <laughs> no pun intended to uh you as an individual to give somebody a poor experience because ultimately what people will remember is what you um, you know how they were feeling during that during that um, whole exchange. And I'll give an example. There's a guy who left, there's, I've got over 170 reviews on my business account, right? But there's two in particular that stand out. I'll never forget these two reviews. And I always try to say that I want to give everybody the best experience as possible when they work with me because I'm grateful for you choosing me and selecting me. And, um, you know, not always, you know, it's kind of sometimes when you provide service, it's a little thankless. Like you don't always know how much you've done for somebody unless they say it. But these two particular reviews, I thought they were really interesting. The first one, this woman talked about how <laughs> when I walked into the room, how what I like to do, and Tiger, you know this, I like to always greet the babies first. Mm -hmm. I, if there's a baby in the room, always 
Dream you said the babies? The baby first. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it, tech, tech like to say, uh, oh, you must be security. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And as silly. And That's as like an icebreaker. That's like an icebreaker. Yep. There you go, man. That sounds so juvenile and amateur and silly, but that thing, that has given me such, from the moment I walk in, I command the room. Mm-hmm. I'm in complete control of the room at that point. And that's a little trick that I use from working in the medical field. But at the same time, when I, when I, so this woman, she left a review and she mentioned that she mentioned, Oh, when he walked into the room, you know, <laughs> my daughter, who's a newborn has been working with our, with our parents, you know, the, the baby's grandparents and the baby's been so fussy and so upset. But when he walked in the room, the baby was completely at ease, and it was such a relief because we were trying to get these power attorneys done, and we had our grandparents there who was watching the baby, and my husband and I, we were trying to get this important documentation done. And when he walked in the room, he just felt like our son just felt so at ease with him. Like, that really, and I was like, damn, that's cool that she noted that because that was my intention, just to do something like that. Hey, right? hey Tiger, real quick, uh, does that mean that you have to be uh, – please everyone 100 percent success rate that you have to please everyone that, that's, or, or that i would, I would say that's that impossible right? right yeah i would right. say it's impossible to please everybody but mm -hmm. um if you have a high standard like a, a i think going into this game of business you have a very high standard of being first class not second mm. class, not third class. You go into the game first class and you give it everything you got. As long as you know you gave it everything you got to uh, do good business, a great business, you know, if, if for some reason that customer is just a pain in the ass, fire their ass, right? People mm -hmm. fire customers all the time, yep. all the time. So, yeah, that's what I would say to that. Uh, so we're going to go into some of the questions and comments on here. Uh, we had, yeah, shout, shout, uh, Kim out. Kimya, yeah, Kim Yanni said, let me pull that up. Big facts, proper LSE structure is a major key. Got to look great on paper. <clears throat> uh, we also have another one from uh, BC. Can I get a no doc loan with a FICO score uh, of 600 plus? No Linda, FICO would score. You say? FICO score yeah. A no FICO score, but credit 600 plus. All right. So remember um, what I stated before. Um, terminology is really huge because for the simple fact, when you go in and you say, hey, I need a, a, a $10,000 loan or a $20,000 loan, $50,000 loan, there's no such thing as a no documentation loan. Mm. Now, you might be thinking what you're trying to say is I need a unsecured business credit card or a stated income business credit card with 0% interest. Thanks for the correction. That's what you're thinking, right? So you're referring to this, right? You're referring to these credit cards, Wells Fargo. So that's what you're thinking. Don't ever walk into the bank and say, I need a no doc loan. Don't say no docs, period. I don't care if you even ask for a credit card because they're going to instantly say we need documentation, right? <laughs> don't ever just say an unsecured business credit card, right? I want to open up a business checking account and, and when you open up, hey, I need an unsecured business credit card, right? So that's how you want to ask. Don't ever ask for no docs. Now, to answer your question, no. You, you, you have to get documentation when you're dealing with a loan. Now again, when it comes to no, when it comes to unsecured business credit card, let me tell you the, the biggest differentiator. Why it's called stated and don't say no docs. Because stated income means banks only care about two things: your willingness to pay them back and your ability to pay them back. Let's start with your willingness. Willingness is based off what? Are you willing to pay us back based on what? Your business credit profile, right? Do you pay your business bills on time? How long you've been in business? Longevity matters. Your business age. What about are you? Um, uh, uh, um, what type of business trade lines do you have on your business credit profile? That's number one. It's also based off your willingness to pay them back. Ninety-five percent of it's based off your personal credit profile. Do you pay your bills on time and over the period of time? Essentially, that's all credit is. All right. Uh, then they're looking at how well do you know how to manage debt? 
AKA your credit utilization, right? And then they also looking at, well, are you being frivolous or AKA are you being thirsty for credit? Which means your hard inquiries, because I don't care if you had an 850 credit score, no lender, no creditor, no financial institution out there want to lend to an individual who looks like they constantly need credit. Mm. It's a bad look. So your inquiries tell you that, right? So they're looking at all this data. So now if, if you have a check mark with your business credit profile, you have a check mark with your personal credit profile, now what they will do, they allow you to state your income. So which means if you say in your business that you made $100,000, they will take your word for it. Why? Because the data says that you can pay your bills on time. You know how to manage that. You're not being thirsty for credit, right? It says all that. So they allow you to say you make $100,000. Now, is that considered bank fraud? Absolutely not. It's right on the business credit application. You can state your income or come close to what you're making. Why? Because it's something that's called projected income. So you might be thinking, London, if I state I made $100,000, I haven't made $100,000, isn't that line? That's not committing bank fraud. Whenever you tell you to commit bank fraud, you can get up to 30 years in prison and a million dollars in front and fine. But what you can do is state your income. Next thing you can do is called projected income. So which means based on your future revenue, based on your future income, your future business plan, your future invoices, your future contracts, you can project that you're going to make $100,000 by the end of the year. So if you haven't made it yet, if it's not in your bank account, this is a strategy where you can make no income in your business. But based on the, the, the things that I just told you, you're going to project that you're going to make $100,000. You can put that on that business credit application all day long and twice on Sunday, right? So that's, and now one more thing, a bonus thing you can do is not only put your business revenue, but your personal income. You can also put additional income, like household income. You can put, um, uh, 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 if you got a trust fund, whatever, you can put stocks income. You can put all different types of income and it's right there on the business credit application. We just don't read the fine print. But it's literally right there. So you can list a whole to, to, to increase your revenue, right? Because all the banks want to know is your DTI, which I stated earlier, which calls your debt to income ratio. The formula for your debt to income ratio, you take your monthly, um, monthly, not expenses, but your monthly debt, car loan, credit card debt, mortgage, right? You divide all your debt, again, not your expenses like your water bill and light bill. That's called expenses, not debt. But then you take your revenue, so you take your monthly debt divided by your revenue, I'll give you your DTI. Banks typically want to see, depending on what bank you go to, 36% or lower when it comes to your DTI. Now, so you're able to project your income, you're able to state your income, and you're able to use additional income like household income like the spouse in order to get qualified for that unsecured business credit card. But it's not called a no-doc. It's definitely not a call no-doc loan. They stopped doing that back in 2008. That's why the market went crazy because they were doing no-docs real estate loans, et cetera, right? There's no Ooh. such thing, no documentation loans, right? But it is a such thing as st stated income business credit cards or unsecured business credit card or even unsecured business lines of credit, right? That is the thing. So to answer your question, a 600 credit score, I would say no, you at least have to be 680 or 700, but it's not just predicated off your credit score. It's based on your credit profile. Are you tracking me? So uh, BC also asked... Um they need help. Where can I uh, get the best approval rate for ten thousand dollars new LLC? How, how can they get in contact with you for the uh, discovery call, London? Oh yeah, so you can. Uh, well, multiple ways. You can go to my website, right? Uh, www.sppmanagementinc.com. Book a free discovery call, or you go to my YouTube channel, London Business as Usual. Click on the link, either my website or go to. Uh, 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 my link that have all my other links in there, right? You can book a free discovery call there, or you can book a one on one with me. That's also in uh, in discussion. Book a one on one with me. We'll break down your business credit profile. We'll break down your personal credit score. We'll do a full evaluation where you are or what you need to do to repair, restore, rebuild your personal credit, and also properly structure your business. So uh, yeah, just book a um, consultation, and we can definitely uh, go there. Or if you want to do it yourself, just get my ebook guy. Shit. That's that's a way to do it too. <laughs> um, so I want to call this uh this section that we're about to go into uh 10x game for your brain. Basically, we're just gonna whatever you feel like 
say in London, or or if there's a story, a situation, a mm. scenario, just go in, hit them with some 10x stuff. Same thing with you, Tech. Just hit them with uh, a situation, a uh, story, a scenario that can help people level up and take their game to the next level. Who wants to go first? Uh, I'll go. Go ahead. So one of the things that new LLCs, new business owners think that, hey, I don't have any income in my business, so I can't get funding. My credit score sucks. It's low, so I can't get funding. Um, I haven't established business credit yet, so I can't get funding. So what they're telling me is that, or what I'm hearing is that you just lack strategy. It's primarily never a credit issue that you have or a income issue that you have. You just don't have the right information and knowledge to formulate the proper strategy. And let me break this down what I mean. There's, I don't care where you're at in your business, there's a way to get the bank's money. But I want to make a clear distinction, distinguish, distinguish between what's business credit versus business funding. So business credit is when you take your brand new business, right? And you go to other companies and you open up lines of credit. Now it could be brand new business or an established business, but you're going to take your, based on your business credit profile, based on your uh, business credit scores, based on your, the structure of your business, you're going to go to other companies and open up lines of credit, like Home Depot, Office Max. You heard this before, Quill, Granger, Uline, Staples, Best Buy, um, and all these other right companies that you can open up lines of credit with. Now, business funding is when you take your brand new business or an established business, but you're also going to take the business owner credit, put the two together. Now you're going to go to these financial institutions and open up lines of credit and get credit lines. PNC Bank, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase Bank, et cetera. Navy Federal, PenFed, Truzy Bank, right? U.S. Bank, I can keep going on for on. But there's a clear distinction between the two. So business funding is based off the business funding is based off the the uh, the product that you get from the bank, and business credit is based off when you go to other companies like Home Depot, open up lines of credit. Why is that important? Here's why. Because business funding takes personal credit, as I mentioned, the business owner credit. Your personal credit needs to be in position, not just your score, but your data that's on your personal credit. But then there's something in the corner that's called bank credit, right? So which means, and I'm not going to break down exactly what bank credit is. That's another day for another live but bank credit just is based off your revenue right so now if you don't have revenue you you can't qualify for bank credit if you don't have per good personal credit you can't qualify for business funding actually going to banks and get their money but if you have business credit business credit just takes strategy and effort right so if you properly structure your business llc ein choose the right name etc and you put the right business trade lines on your business credit profile now so you, you're essentially building out the tier system tier one tier two tier three but here's what you probably don't know london you just said the uh, business credit i can't get the bank's money well if you don't know this strategy you can't get the bank's money so building out the tier system alone won't get you the, the bank money right you have to properly position your business credit profile and what i mean by that is you have to simply add the right business trade lines Right. So if we go to Experian business and add the right business trade line, did you know there's only one bank in the whole U.S. that will allow you to do this strategy that you can get unsecured business credit card, a MasterCard, a MasterCard just based off. So most of you probably think, oh, this is just a SoundCloud card. I only can use that SoundCloud. No, this is a MasterCard where you can use anywhere that takes MasterCard. You get this EIN only. EIN only based off your business credit profile, based off your business credit score and how you structure your business. You put that together. And then you go to sell card was backed by Secret Bank and go get an unsecured business credit card, MasterCard with either eight thousand dollars all the way up to twenty one thousand dollars without any income, without any personal credit. It's just all about your business credit profile. So guess what? You went from business credit. Now you got the bank's money. So now you went to business funding. Guess what you're going to do from there? You're going to liquidate that credit card and turn that into bank credit. So now we got bank credit that we have sitting in the bank. We put that $10,000. So now we're building a bank credit. Remember, it's based off revenue. So now we're building bank credit. We're going to let that money sit. And now we can get a loan based off that money. So let's break that down. What I just did. 
we just started from nothing and we end up all the way towards the end without using none of our own money, without having good personal credit. All we did is strategize. We started with bank credit, bank funding. I'm sorry, we started with business credit, bank fund, uh, uh, business funding, bank credit. Then we got a bank loan. All from no income and no personal credit. So my point is, it's possible. That's 10x for you right there. That's why I went on that rent. That's 10x. Yeah, that's real. The, um, <clears throat> yo, which I wanted to ask you this question too, just as a kind of a follow up, uh, London, because I was just kind of thinking, are, are most people that you work with, I just want to know how are their experiences with credit? Is it positive? Is it negative? Because I know there's a lot of people who just don't believe in credit cards altogether. And there's some entrepreneurs who even are still a little bit hesitant and reserved about dealing with credit. And because I'm going to speak to this in a second about because you said something interesting earlier about cash flows, King. But I mm -hmm. want to know, are most people you deal with, are their experiences with credit and funding? Are they a little bit more conservative or are people a little bit more aggressive for the most part? So most people are ignorant when it comes to credit because most people don't understand how credit card works. It's a simple, fundamental thing that. Most consumers don't know. The reason why most consumers don't know, because half of it's not their fault. The household never taught about credit because the parents don't even know how credit works. I once asked my mom what was credit back in the day. Shout out to my mom. I once asked my mom what was credit back in the day. She said it was free money that the government gives us. So with that mindset, how could she yeah. teach me? Right. So it's not taught in the household. We all know it's definitely not taught in schools. Right. So they're not teaching us. So how are we supposed to know about credit if we don't study it ourselves? How are we supposed to know how credit cards work? So if you know how to, here's the thing. I'll put it this way. If you know how to master credit cards, you can manipulate your credit cards any way you want to. If you understand your payment due date, your statement date, your open and close statement date, and your reporting date, you can manipulate your credit cards any way you want to because now you understand how they work. So you won't worry about, having bad credit due to your credit cards affecting or lowering your credit score. So to answer your question, no, people have no idea how credit cards work. They did. They will constantly use their credit cards because they want the cash back. They want the reward points. They want the air, uh, uh, the airline miles, right? You get all these benefits from using your credit cards as opposed to just using your debit card. So answer your question. No. And, and that, in that, I love that answer because that's kind of where I am right now. Because my 10x response for you, Gold, let me teach you something, guys. It pays to shop around. That is really true. What really just happened to me in real life, I was looking for renewing my homeowner's insurance. All right. So one company quoted me at $13.92 for the whole year. All right. Now, I could just slap that on a credit card and be done with it, or you can pay it in two installments, or you can pay it monthly by monthly, right? There's all these different scenarios. If you do it in one lump sum, you it's a little bit less. If you do it, if you spread it out over a year, it goes up about $170 or so, right? If you did it month by month. But what that does is that takes away from your monthly cash flow. I went out and shopped around. And said, let me go try some other carriers out there. And you may be thinking to yourself, yeah, that's a smart thing to do. But in terms of like credit and talk, because you know, the guy uh asked a question about getting the 10k loan with the LLC. I think, and this is kind of my experience because I'm dealing with a brother who's working with this, who's trying to go get the credit as well and get uh funding. Sometimes you might just go with the first person that gives it to you, but it actually might be to your advantage to go and shop around. And this mm -hmm. is how me living, you know, doing what I say, you know, <laughs> I'm saying I actually follow my own advice. I went and shopped around and I got another quote for 1038. All right. And it's not so much the price, but it's actually reading the fine print, seeing what the coverages are and seeing just understanding insurance, understanding what is it that I need? What type of coverage do I need? So I saved three hundred fifty-four dollars, right? If I pay it off in one lump sum, 
Now, under me understanding credit, and this is why I'm going to bring this like a holistic approach to business ownership, to knowing how cash flow, to managing your debt, managing your finances, being fiscally sound. All these things don't come together. This is why you build brick by brick by brick until you have an empire. You have a fortress that's impenetrable and you're and you have a filter so nobody can be at you. Right. You are now controlling your own family's empire. So that three hundred fifty four dollars that I saved. Right. One lump sum that now adds an additional cash flow to my my household income. Now, I'm able to because I understand how credit works. I'm able to get this expense or get my family and my you know investments protected and also to eliminate this monthly expense or this monthly bill. It's an afterthought. I don't even think about that now. And I'm able to after, you know, I pay it all off because I'm, you know, we have our own banks. <laughs> you know, we borrow for ourselves, not the banks. Mm-hmm. And now I'm able to pay myself back on and I have to have an increased monthly cash flow back to my own family family and my own household because it just paid to shop around and look twice, look three, look four times rather than, yeah, this company gave me the first auto loan, but it was an 18% interest. Uh, well, they gave it to me, you know, I'm going to just take it. Well, if you kind of take some of these gems that we're uh, dropping and giving out, Knowing how to read your statements, knowing how to knowing mm-hmm. to to inspect what it is that coming into your household and really paying attention to it, it can make a drastic difference over the course. Yeah, maybe not tomorrow or next week, but over the course of a year, two years, three years, five years down the road. Next thing you know, you're a multimillionaire. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, you've got a larger saving account that you've ever had in your life, all because you take these little steps to pay attention to how things are moving or flowing in and out of your life and avoiding some of these traps and avoiding some of these hits that truthfully, it happens every day. This stuff happens every single day. You're getting hit with all kinds of taxes, all kinds of interest, all type of, you know, all type of fees every single day. But if you could just pay a little bit more attention to it, inspect it a little bit closer and, and uh, you know, sort of, uh, like you said, Tiger, updating your approach, of staying up to date and upgrading your your mindset, bro, it can have a significant uh, effect on your whole life and your relationships and family, your health. And uh, I think, man, these self trainings are great. And having London here to drop some of these jewels has definitely got my mind going too. And I want to thank you guys for actually joining uh, the show today. I hope you guys got uh, a lot of value from this. I would highly recommend that you share this with your fellow entrepreneur, um, small business owner that is looking for some remedies and solutions to some of these common catastrophes that all small businesses experience that actually put them out of business. So share this with your friend, put it in the email, send it to you, uh, you know, your close ones. We, sh- we should have a support system. And I, I want to uh, thank everybody that's been engaging on YouTube. You're dropping uh, your comments and stuff like that. Uh, London, let, let them know how they can find you and how they can reach out to you, brother. Sure. Uh, first and foremost, since we are on YouTube, definitely follow my YouTube, right? Uh, subscribe to the channel. London Business as usual. I drop a new video every Monday, uh, 10 a.m. Central Time. So you definitely want to subscribe to YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to take a step further, uh, you can book a, a one-on-one consultation with me uh, to see exactly where you are in your business, to see what we need to do to optimize your personal credit and how we can properly structure your business credit profile so you can start building business credit. But I want to say to all the inspiring business owners out there, um, when you go into business, your number one role as a CEO, as the founder, as the chairman of your company is to get the money, right? Also to solve money. people problems, right? You, you need to solve people problems, obviously, but your number one thing is make sure that you have the money to have access to capital. That's the main thing because you can't, you can start your business. Anybody can create an LLC. The, one of my pet peeves, real quick, real quick. 
is yeah. when I hear <laughs> is when I hear I got five businesses and say it with a chest out, so proud. I got three LLCs. I'm doing this. I'm <laughs> doing that. You saying it like it's a good thing. First of all, <laughs> you haven't even mastered what you're doing first, right? So we hear this multiple streams of income, get multiple streams of income. So that's what we do. But not realizing that when you're dealing with multiple streams of income, you can get multiple streams of income in real estate by itself. Mm -hmm. I can name 10 streams of income in real estate by itself right now. Then after you master real estate, then you diversify your portfolio and go do something else and create another LLC and do that. But you don't go get three or five LLC. You can't even um, build off the one LLC that you have right now. Why? Because you lack the capital. So my point is, get access to money. You can start your LLC. That's fine. But your number one priority is to make sure you have capital so you can grow and scale your business. So I don't care if it takes six months, 12 months, two years to put your personal credit in position. Stop believing individuals that tell you you can just go and build on your 80 pay that score. Yeah. Lenders, creditors, any financial institution in the world, you can call any bank. They can care less about your 80 pay that score. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> you know how easy it is to get an 80 pay that score? You can get two accounts with Quill, Granger, and Uline and get an 80 pay that score. Do you really think the banks are going to give you funding? based off your 80 pay that score and it really goes up to 100 zero to 100 but we just say 80 pay that score because that's where other uh companies like to see right that you build them with like uline granger and quill but when you're dealing with financial institutions like banks they care about financial trade lines so right i don't want to go along but that's my message get the money go get the money get the yeah, money chico get the money exactly yeah, tech, the money. let them know how they can get find you money. brother Fascinating. I love that. What is that, man? <laughs> God, thanks, baby. Yeah, go to drtech.com, D R T E K K.com. I'm Mr. Notary on Automation. I love the whole idea of getting clients. So, London, talk mm -hmm. about get the money. Yeah, get the money, learn how to get the money and keep it. That's my biggest thing now mm, is teaching exactly. people how to not lose money because, you know, everybody want to be secure and everybody want to be safe and everybody wants somebody to believe in them so you know if you have a notary commission put it to use you know the different types of ways to get money in notary industry is always interesting you know people talk about active income passive income investment income and ultimately that multiple streams of income thing that people talk about see i'm trying to take off the handcuffs now you know? Ooh, Jack, real quick i like what you just said you said get the client Jack, I, I like what you just said you said get the client and the reason why is because I want to be very clear when I say this because I forgot to say it. Credit is not income, right? You, you, you utilize credit as a tool to get the client, a.k.a. to get the cash flow. So you use your credit and invest in the asset that's going to produce cash flow. It is not income. So just because hmm. you got $50,000 or $100,000 in, in, in unsecured uh, credit lines, that does not mean that you are in good shape. You still got to find a way to utilize that credit to make money. So that means what tech saying right now, get the client that's going to bring you the cash flow, get clients. So just want to ask man, credit is not um, income. Yeah. And that's and just flowing off of that. That's, that's the sentiment. And so in the specifically with the notary industry, that's what I teach. I'm obsessed with it mm -hmm. and I know how much it can help people. So drtech.com, I've got courses, I've got books and I've got, you know, personal coaching that can help you get clients. And once you understand this industry from a perspective that that's the obsession, that's the target to get clients, help people. I just had a body just, you know, bing me up a little bit here using Thumbtack. And this person is asking a bunch of questions, right? I can help you out. It's not that I'm not willing to, it's just that let's decide when you want it. And it's important that you convey that message because ultimately Getting clients, that's what's going to keep you in business. London, if you don't get clients, how long are you going to be in business? <laughs> uh, you're going to be out of business very, very quickly if you don't yeah. get clients, right? Not very long, man. You're going to Not be very long. So you're going to be out of business because, again, clients bring the cash flow in. That's why I tell people cash flow is king. So you definitely got to uh, – but credit is just a good tool for you to have a marketing budget. And to 100%. go get the client, right? So that's for sure. 100%. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys 
for being on the show. Everyone that tuned in for the show, I really appreciate you guys. Oh, by the way, I am three subscribers short on my channel. Come on, I know I can hit that. Today. Hey, look, everybody who's on my YouTube channel, make sure y'all go <laughs> um, follow Tiger. Is it Tiger Toledo? What's your um, YouTube? Yes, yeah, Tiger uh, Toledo. Tiger Toledo. Hey, get my boy at uh again, create a win-win situation. He talk about marketing strategy all the time. I don't specialize in that. I learned so much from Tiger as far as when it comes to marketing. So Andy specialized in uh, not only specialized in marketing, but he also specialized in notary. So if you want to do a side hustle, right? If you want to create a business or so small business doing notary, definitely got to link up with. So you guys definitely want to uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and yeah, get that, get that content. Somebody asked a question. I have oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, the let, let, Let's hit that one, one last question before we head out. Uh, I have a uh, ink. Uh, what are the best banks to get a loan? So he's talking about he's incorporated at an LLC. I have a ink. Okay, what are the best line? Okay, so remember, so when you're dealing with loans, Tiger, y'all tech, y'all see people keep saying loans, right? Mm -hmm. Different, different product, right? So we got to know when we're dealing with loans. Uh, now you're talking about uh, term loans, right? There's there's different trade lines. So you're not talking about unsecured business credit cards. You're talking about a loan, which is a, a tri line that's called a, a term loan, right? Or, or um, installment loan. So the best base to get a loan, I'll just answer your question then and probably tell you what you're really trying to say. Uh, the best banks, I would say, go to credit unions like Navy Federal, PenFed to try to get a loan or your local credit union. I would say that's the best or your community bank, your small community bank. Why? Because they care more about the customer is probably owned as opposed to going to Chase, where not only they have to uh, uh, make sure you are in position, but also they have to on the back end. Maybe they get their loan through SBA. Maybe um, that that underwriter, they rules and regulations have to be in position. So it's going to be very uh, more challenging for you to get a loan through these national banks like a, a, a Wells Fargo or Bank of America or Chase. Go to your community bank or go to your uh, small uh or a credit union. Now, if you're trying to get unsecured business credit cards, right now, that's different than a loan. So unsecured business credit cards, I, I would still tell you to go to community banks and go to uh, um, your local credit unions or even go to national credit unions. But more importantly, you could still go to national banks because national banks got something with 0% interest credit cards, which yes. is great. So if you go to US Bank, you go to PNC Bank, if you go to uh, 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 Bank of America and Chase, American Express, right? You can go to all these banks and go get unsecured business credit card with 0% interest for six months, 12 months, 18 months, 21 months. Love it. But that's different from a loan. So we have to get that in our minds, in our mind. Not a loan, depending on what you need. Damn. Do people know how powerful 0% interest money is? I don't <laughs> think they know. I don't think they know, Tech. That's crazy. You can literally write yourself as, so all these loans that y'all talking about, how can I get a loan? How can I get a loan? Well, did you know you can write yourself a 0% interest loan by liquidating that credit card, get a balance transfer check, write yourself a 0% mm. loan, put that uh, money he about, into- He hitting y'all you know? with that 10X game for your brain you know, again. That, so it, that, that's how you get a loan. So again, it's all it's strategy. You ain't have to do a business plan. Do I need to be in, two, uh, to be in business for two years? No. Do I need a business plan? No. I did that with my first loan through a company called Asian because I didn't know any better when I first got my, uh, well, my second party bus, right? I didn't know any better that there was a such thing that different financial products out there. So just be careful. That's not their responsibility to tell you either. That's not their responsibility to tell you that either. Oh, hell no. Nah. Yeah. Definitely not. They ain't, they, look, as a business owner, they expect for you to know. That's what my whole point is. So if mm. you're going and asking for a loan, they're going to be like, okay, well, I assume you know what a loan is. Right. So they expect for you to know these things already. So just be very careful what you ask for. That's the biggest mistakes that small business owner make. Ask for the wrong product. Right. It's like not knowing the terminology because lawyers got their own terminology. Right. Lawyers, they got their own verbiage. Same thing with doctors. They got their own um, language, uh, yeah. real estate agents. Everybody have their own language. So bankers and you dealing with credit, you have to learn the language. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah, it'll save you some oh, sure. money, <laughs> some debt interest. For sure, 100%. So again, thank you guys for uh, joining on the show. Uh, what We're going to be back next Wednesday. 
around the same time, same bat channel, same bat station. Let's do it. You know what I mean? And uh, we're going to continue to uh, bless the community with knowledge that's going to help them build better business. Because I really, I really believe small businesses is the backbone of the United States. There's about 33 million yeah. small businesses out there in the United States. Uh, they employ anywhere from uh, 6 million and up. So small businesses is the backbone of the United States. So let, let, let's let talk more about that and let's uh, get you on the right road. You guys have a credit specialist, business funding credit specialist here with London Dagens. And then you also have someone that is very astute with uh, automation, streamlining your business and understanding the notary industry. Take advantage of this, you guys. Take mm -hmm. advantage. No, no, no one's hiding. No one's hiding. We're, we're here in your face. Reach right, out right. to us so we can chop it up with you guys. And with that said, peace, love, and happiness. I wish you guys the very best. Peace. Peace. Later.